So as European states like France, Prussia, Russia, and Austria were sliding headlong into absolutism during this period, there were two very significant exceptions to this trend, namely the English and the Dutch. And since we already talked about England's constitutionalism in previous Unit 3 videos, I reckon we ought to give this one to the Dutch. So if you're ready to get them brain cows milked, Let's get to it. So where did this contrarian Dutch experiment in anti-absolutism come from? Well, you should know that prior to 1648, all this territory right here was ruled by the Spanish Habsburgs, and the Dutch were not real happy about that arrangement. And so in the mid-16th century, the Eighty Years' War began with a Dutch revolt against their Habsburg rulers. By the end, that war kind of got folded into the Thirty Years' War, which we considered in another video, and all of it was ended in the Peace of Westphalia signed in 1648. As a result of that treaty, the Dutch won their independence from the Spanish and the Republic of the United provinces of the Netherlands was born. And don't get confused, Netherlands is the place, the Dutch are the people. Now clearly the Dutch had kind of a monarchy hangover after so long being trampled upon by the Habsburgs, and so they rejected a monarchical form of government in favor of a constitutional government. But the Dutch flavor of constitutionalism was different from England's. England favored a constitutional monarchy in which the monarch was limited by the rule of law by the power of the two houses of parliament. The Dutch, on the other hand, made precisely no provision for a monarch and instead opted for a republican government, which means that the power was in the hands of the people and the government did its work by means of the people's representatives. Now, within the Netherlands, there were provincial governments and there was a federal government, which you might roughly compare to our government here in the U.S. We have state governments and we have a federal government. There are also a lot of dissimilarities, but as a general comparison, that might help you to remember. Now, in the Netherlands, each province had its own assembly called an estate, and the provincial estates held most of the power. Each of these states was ruled by an oligarchy, which is a form of government in which a few people rule, as opposed to a monarchy in which one person rules. Now, the oligarchy was usually made up of wealthy businessmen and rural landowners, and they handled all the province's domestic policy. And furthermore, each estate appointed a stadtholder who performed ceremonial duties and was responsible for military defense. The federal government, which had a lot less power than the estates, was known as the state's general, and it mostly handled foreign policy and war. And because it had so little power, every major issue had to be referred back to the provincial governments, all of which had veto power. Now, this governmental structure was exceedingly successful for the Dutch, which is why this period is known as the Dutch Golden Age. And much of their success rested on the fact that they were about the wealthiest European state during that time. The Dutch invested heavily in shipbuilding, and because of their geographical position on the Atlantic Ocean, they were able to exploit the riches of the growing Atlantic trade, not to mention they made a significant footprint in the Indian Ocean trade as well. And all of that taken together meant that the Dutch had the highest standard of living in all of Europe, and arguably the world during this time. And that meant that while everyone else in Europe was rioting over food, the Dutch sat at their tables and feasted heartily. Okay, right here are the rest of my videos covering Unit 3, and that's probably where you should go next. Additionally, click right here to grab the note guides for all my AP Euro videos, which are going to help you internalize this information and crush this course. All right, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the flip-flop. Heimler out.